Hello, it's Saturday, the 19th of January, 2012, uh, no, 2013, sorry, shall I do that again? No, we'll leave it in, leave the mistakes in 2013, welcome to today's uh, United Kingdom talk. I'm actually recording this on Friday and the snow is pouring down outside, it's pouring down so much I have not been able to cycle to my swimming pool today. No swimming for Chris today, I'm afraid. Which is a shame, really, because at last they have sorted out the swimming pool. Ten bloody weeks it's taken them. Apparently, it was a spare part called a heat exchanger. Have you got any idea what that is? No, me neither. Apparently, they found this, this part, the heat exchanger, and it had gone rusty. And the heat wasn't transferring properly from one side to the other. So they've put the new spare part in. And on Monday, it was, oh, it was lovely. Oh, you put your toe, I put my toe in. Oh, it's warm. I thought, how, ex how wonderful. And I got in the pool and I did my legs. And then when I finished, I came out and went over to the pool boys and said, oh, oh, lovely, lovely it felt. Oh, it's a little bit too warm at the moment, mate. They said, oh, it's talking like the mate. It's a bit too... I'm, I'm actually really chatting them up most of the time, but they don't realise that. It's probably best that they don't. Do you know what I mean? So I was talking to the pool boys, and uh, they said it was a bit too... Oh, no, I said, leave it as it is now, please. And then um, I went downstairs, got changed, and as I was going out, the manager was coming in. His name's David. And I said, oh, David. And he was with Dave. Uh, 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 Dave is uh, one of the sales team. I said, David, let me give you a hug. And he said, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> and he looks quite shocked. I don't know why. Uh, but I said, okay, let me give you a hug. He said, well, what's happened? I said, you've sorted out the swimming pool. He said, oh, is it all right now? I said, yes, it's perfect. I said, the pool boys did say it was a touch too hot now by about something ridiculous. Only by, by about a degree or something like that. I said, don't listen to them. Leave it alone. It is perfect. And he laughed and off I went. And it was good Tuesday, Wednesday. I have to say Thursday, it was down a little touch. It was down a touch Thursday, but not uncomfortable in any way. And uh, there was a woman in there. I said, isn't it? It's so much better, isn't it now? She says, oh, she says, um, it's just, just a smidgen too warm now. I said, oh, it's not, dear. Leave it alone. She said, oh, no, I'll have to say something. It's just a bit too warm. This is the same woman. I don't know if I remember telling you ages ago. She slipped over on a bit of water around the pool, you know, which is one of those things happens. And then she starts sh 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 shouting and screaming at the poor pool boys. And it's your fault for not doing your job properly. I'm going to sue. I'm going to sue one of those people. Do you know what I mean? I can't stand those people. She's always very pleasant to me or always have a conversation. But you get this feeling she's one of these women who wants to be right all the time, you know? And as you know, especially when women are talking to me and they write all the time, or they think they're right all the time, and they're actually not, because I am right all the time. As you, <laughs> as you well know, boys and girls. So I think she went out there and told them it was a little bit too warm. But it, it, it is very, oh, it's wonderful to be back in a warm pool after about. 10 weeks. You may remember uh, back last year, was it October, November? I told you the pool had suddenly gone very cold. I don't know what the problem is. A maintenance bloke in there as well. He's, he's not been there long. He's been there about two months. It actually went wrong just after he came, but I, I think that was a coincidence. And I used to try and open a conversation with him. He now, he just don't look straight through me now. I don't know what his problem is. All the other, all the other staff in there, this is the Virgin Active in Wokenham, all very, very pleasant. You know, never, never, never unpleasant, never miserable. But he, I don't know what his problem is. He, he just looks so miserable all the time. And when you try and talk to him, he just doesn't want to know. Isn't that strange? He's not old. It's about... 25, 24, 25, 26, something. The maintenance guy before him was always very pleasant to talk to. You know, he'd stop and have a chat. All the cleaners talked to him. There was only two cleaners there. One old boy called Lee. He's, oh, he's great, he is. He's always got a story to tell. And uh, a younger chap as well. I can't remember. I don't, I'm not quite sure what his name are. All this stuff. But the maintenance guy is as miserable a sin. He really is. He's not even old. Isn't it funny how some people are like that? I mean, he'd probably be better off on the till in Sainsbury's or somewhere like that where they're, where they're miserable on there. Unless, of course, they've been told what to say, you know. We've had that discussion many times, haven't we? You know, when you get to the till. And, and how are you today, sir? And I don't really mean it. And I've said to you this so many times before. You go into Waitrose and they have a conversation. And it's nothing to do with age, as I found out yesterday. 
right? Because, oh, by the way, so, so those of you that are watching the show today may be thinking, oh, your eye doesn't look very good. Yes, I've got a bit of a sore eye. Yesterday, this happened about 18 hours ago now. Yesterday, um, I stroked the cat. And I am allergic to cats, okay? But, I mean, if I stroke them and wash my hands, it's okay. Uh, but I stroke the cat. <clears throat> a little bit later on, I, 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 I wiped my eye. I scratched my eye like that, right? And very quickly it came up. Now, sometimes I can get over that by immediately going to wash the eye out in water. Not take it out of my head and put it under the tap, you know, just splashing water up on it. But uh, this time I, I, I didn't do it. I thought, I'll do it in a minute, do it in a minute. And by then, it got really itchy. And that's why my eye is a little bit sort of closed up today. It probably doesn't look very good on the, um, on the, uh, on the uh, video today, those of you that watch the show. But uh, that's what's happened there. I've got a bit of a sore eye due, due to cat fur. A <clears throat> bit of cat fur in the eye, I think. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. So I went to Waitrose yesterday because we had to get some bits and pieces. Uh, I went out there with my best mate, Ron. We'd like Waitrose. We like the service. And um, I got all my bits and pieces. And, uh, oh, you know those glass, glass, um, oh, what are they? Glass storage dishes that I asked for my sister for Christmas. Do you remember those? Which, incidentally, she did get me. I did, I did bring them into the studio just after Christmas to show you. Well, um, I had great trouble finding those before Christmas, and that's why I said, Sis, can you get me a few of those glass dishes? And that's what she got me, so that's it. Do you know what? Ever since then, I just see them everywhere. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Everywhere I look, I see Pyrex glass storage dishes. And it was a bit silly, really, because I actually rung my sister last week. Because I pulled off the label, you know, you, you get instructions on everything these days, didn't you? I pulled off the label off the top of this glass storage dish. And I was reading the instruction, and I come across the section that said, not suitable, you know, took the lid off, not suitable for conventional ovens. And I thought, well, that's odd. You know, and I had another look, another quick, you know how you read these things quickly, I had another quick look there. So I rung up my sister, I said, I said, you're not going to believe this, sis. you know those Pyrex dishes you got me? I said, she said, yeah. I said, well, I've already bought some more from, from another Asda, which was there. And I bought another couple in Waitrose yesterday. I bought another four in there. There were 50 pence deer in there, but it doesn't matter. I bought another four in there yesterday. And I took the label off, and it says not conventional. She says, she says, you're joking. She says, all that Pyrex stuff is all right. For I said, well, that's what I thought. She said, are you sure it's not the lid? Because the lid is like plastic. And I said, well, I don't think so. I didn't see the word lid anywhere. She said, I bet it's just the lid. You have another look. So I pulled off another label. And sure enough, I, I'd missed that word lid. Now, how stupid am I? So you can put them in the oven, but don't put the lid in there. It needs to make the word lid bigger for my poor little eyes. Especially my bad one. Anyway, so I'm in Waitrose yesterday. I've got my bits and pieces. And I went to the till, and this time uh, there's no one at the till. There was this young young boy there, so I got there, um, and um, he starts putting us off. And it, uh, I don't know what it is. The conversation in there just seems to flow naturally. One or the other instigates it, you know, old lady or person on the till. And he says, um, you ready for the snow then, mate? I said, no, I hate it. He said, oh, I love it. He said, uh, he said he likes going on his sledge and all this. It was only about 22, something like that. And the conversation just flowed. Whereas in Sainsbury's, unless it's someone sort of over the age of 45, 50, okay? In which case, that it does seem to flow a bit better. But when it's some young girl in there, or, or a young boy in, in Waitrose, in, in Sainsbury's, it just doesn't seem to flow. It's like they've been told what to say word for word. It doesn't work. And again, I've said on a show before, um, this, this all comes down to this sort of customer service thing and all that business. I, I just, and I, I think, Companies, shops, businesses now spend quite a lot of money training people to be good at customer service or talking to customers. And in my mind, I just don't understand why they have to do that. I do understand why they have, because people don't, can't do it anymore. Why can't people talk to people nicely anymore? You know, you notice that. It's weird, isn't it? Is it because of computers and 
mobile phones, and I've said to you before, you know, sometimes people come and ask me for a request if I'm doing DJing, right? And they, they stand right in front of you, start tapping away on their phone, and then put it in your face. And that, on that phone is written the request that they want played. And they want to talk to you. They are losing the art of communication. This is very worrying. Because then companies spend small amounts of small fortunes trying to train them to talk to people. But it doesn't work. It's very robotic. It's like these arseholes that ring you up on the phone trying to sell you stuff. They're reading from a script. Doesn't work on me. I put the phone straight down. Not interested. I don't even say I'm not interested or no. As soon as they start their spiel, phone down. No, thank you. No arseholes to ring up here, please. And why has this happened? Why can't people converse anymore? Weirdest thing. Weirdest thing. So, back to Waitrose. So I'm in Waitrose getting my bits and pieces just before I went to the till when uh, the boy was talking to me about the snow and that. And uh, I came across this Waitrose bread mix stuff. Now they do various different, all, all sorts of different types in there. One of them was um, uh, wholemeal. So I bought, and they were doing two for the price, three for the price of two. So I bought three of these packs of Waitrose bread mix. Now I have been making the bread from separate ingredients, i.e. flour, yeast, water, bit of soya milk, bit of, um, oh, what's the other thing in there? Something else, I mean, oh, a bit of, bit, of, bit of olive oil, put all that in, I've been making it, but for some reason it hasn't been rising properly. It, it's risen a bit, but not properly, in which case it's quite dense. But uh, I have, I, I bought, so I thought I'd try this bread mix, and I bought it, well, today, I've just woken up, you know, when I woke up this morning, and the whole house was full of the smell of bread. I went downstairs, and as I walked down, the, the bread machine, it went beep, beep, which indicates that the bread is now ready. I opened the lid, and there was the best loaf of bread I have ever baked in my entire life. It had risen and everything. It's, I've done a little picture here. Uh, those of you that are watching the show, a picture of my very well-risen bread. Look at that! And I immediately, you know, you immediately have to have a little slice, don't you? Oh, yes. It was very nice and warm. So there we are. So I might uh, buy a few more of those. I'll try again with the flour. I'm not quite sure why it's not rising properly. If you've got a bread machine, maybe you know. One thing I have been doing is uh, putting the water and the olive oil in, okay? Then the flour, and then putting the yeast stuff on top. Maybe I'm supposed to um, mix the yeast in with the bread, uh, mix the yeast in with the flour, and then put that on top of the water. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe you know different. Email me and tell me, please. Uh, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. A uh, little message from David on the Isle of Wight. He seemed to have an issue uh, playing the last um, show. Uh, he said it, it finished early, so I'm not quite sure um, what went on there, David. Uh, but I did double check and I played the show myself and uh, indeed it does seem to finish at the end, it doesn't finish early. Although there seemed to be a little bit of a sound issue in the last video uh, towards the end. Did anyone notice that? It was like a double, almost like an echo, so I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Uh, and that's it really, I think. Uh, just a couple of other things. I've become involved in something new. Uh, one of my um, friends, he used to he used to come in into one of the places I worked uh, in Camden Town many years ago as a young boy, and he's now uh, I think he's uh, in his early thirties, late twenties, early thirties, and he's put together a company that deals with uh, mobile discos and uh, other entertainment type things, and he's taken me on board on that one. Uh, me and oh, all sorts of texts coming in there. Just a moment, what's going on here? It's all very exciting. Texts pour 
pouring into the studio, pouring in. Anyway, uh, the company is called White Wire Entertainment. You can look on Facebook, they've got a Facebook page. Please have a little look there and like it because apparently, I'm not quite sure how that works, but the more likes you get, the better it is. So White Wire Entertainment or entertainments and uh, I'll be doing some, I, I, I've come on board within that company, become part of its staff at the top. We're on like a three month probationary period. We have a meeting every week and uh, decide what we're going to do and then we go out and do it. And we've only just started yesterday. So that's looking very interesting. And uh, he's got very uh, 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 big ambitions, probably more so than my own. I don't really have um, uh, ambition. I don't really think I have much ambition anymore. I'm certainly not not driven by money or anything. I'm driven by smiles on people's faces. You see, you know, when you go out and DJ at a wedding or a club or a bar or something like that, and people go home and have had a good night because of you. That that's how I'm driven. Um, although I do like, you know, I do like to be paid for the job I've been done. You know, I don't like there's you know pubs and and bars to take piss. If you see, I'm, I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. Maybe you're in a job, or you've done something for someone, and I've said, "Oh, thanks very much." Is is a five, and you're taking the piss, mate. Do you know what I mean? I don't like that, but I am not driven by money. I am driven by smiles on faces and what I do. And hence, this, you know, none of this is paid. You know, I, I, I'm driven by the fact that someone might write in and say that they've enjoyed the show, as indeed you do many, many times. In fact, there's a big pile of emails here in front of me today, which we're going to move on to in a minute. So please have a look at that. White Wire Entertainment. His ambition is that at some point when he, uh, uh, in the future, he wants people who want a mobile disco to immediately know the white wire name. You know, like, um, for example, a Hoover. Now, many people know them as Hoover. They are vacuum cleaners, but the leading, by far the leading brand name, I don't know if they're the leading brand, but the leading brand name is Hoover. I still call my Dyson a Hoover. I've got a Hoover. It's a Dyson, right? But it's not a Hoover, is it? It's a vacuum cleaner, which is a Dyson. But I know the word as Hoover. As many, many people know the word as Hoover. My nephew, my little nephew, well, he's, little, he's not little anymore, he's 25 with his own daughter and wife. Uh, he used to be terrified of the Hoover <laughs> when he was a little boy. And as soon as a Hoover would go and he'd come up and go, <gasps> Hoover, <gasps> Hoover, Hoover like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never let him forget that, I'm pleased to say. Anyway, um, so he wants people to think, oh, we need a mobile disco. Oh, we'll go to White Wire. He wants that name in their head. Am I going blurry here? Just a minute. What's going on with this? There's something going wrong with this today. That's better. Um, he wants people, as soon as they say mobile disco, oh, yeah, White Wire. He wants that name in people's heads. Okay? So that's his... Um, that's his, um, uh, 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 oh, what's the word? That's his ambition, part of his ambitions. He's also got many other uh, ambitions within that. And I'm on board to, to um, try and help it. There's, there's a few of us, actually. Uh, so please do have a little look at that and see what you think. White Wire Entertainment. There's also a website. Do you know what? I'm not quite sure what the website is. Just a moment. One moment, please. Let me just look it up for you. Oh, maybe, I wonder what happened if I type it into Google. Will it come up at the top? Oh, oh, ba -ba -ba -bum. there it is. Whitewire.co.uk. All right, what, is that one? One moment, please. Oh, da -da -da -da. Is that the one? Yes, that's got to be the one. Yes, yes, whitewire.co.uk is the website. Okay, whitewire.co.uk is the website. And uh, White Wire Entertainment's the uh, page on Facebook. So uh, have a little look there. Something I'd like you to write in about, boys and girls, because as you know, the day is approaching. My birthday. The big one. The big five -oh. Oh yes, I know, I know I don't look like it. I am told that all the time. Indeed, in certain places, I try and get away with 39, and I do. I do, believe me, I do get away with 39. There's something wrong today. What is going on with this camera? 
keeps going blurry, doesn't it? Does it keep going blurry? Just a minute, let me turn. It must be this auto, because you've got an auto focus on it. Let me just try and push that. There we are. That stopped that focus in there. Um, yes, the benefits of over 50. Now, I'd never thought about this before. But apparently there's quite a few benefits with actually going over that age. One of which is cheaper car insurance. Now I've wondered, have you come across, are there, is there anyone out there over 50? I know, come on, there's one or two of you, isn't there? Oh, come on, spill the beans. There's one or two of you out there. Is there anyone over 50? And if so, can you tell me some of the benefits? All right. Please let me know on an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The benefits of being over 50. Let me know, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All righty then. Um, I've got so much more to talk about today, but also lots of emails. So I'm going to go on to those now. Uh, hello to Marge. Hello, Marge, who writes, hello. What's going on here with all these emails here? <laughs> it's from my neighbour. Oh, and a little little text message has come up here from my neighbour um, because I put a picture of my bread this morning on the wall. And my my neighbour, literally the next door to me, lo lovely couple, David and uh, Karen, and it's, apparently they've just made a loaf as well, so they're competing with me. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Well done, David and Karen there with the bread. Uh, Marge writes, Hello, Chris. Glad your new year is doing well so far. Not too bad at all, except for the snow outside. I don't like the snow, Marge. Might stop me going to work tonight, unfortunately. There is already someone in place, though. Uh, someone who lives much nearer to the place. I've asked them to be on standby in case I can't make it. Um, I've just finished watching one of your videos. I got very tickled at a comment you said, even though I didn't know you realised what you said. I quote, Do you have a dog that you just woken up and you turn over or something and you heard them meowing? Watch it again and you see what I mean. <laughs> should I have said cat? I think I should have said probably cat there. Is that... There's something going on with this camera. I don't know what's going on with this... I mean... Just a minute, it's, it's it's unfocusing again, isn't it? The camera keeps unfocusing. Is it this light? I don't know what's going on with this today. Oh, very, very strange. I'm gonna keep an eye on that there. Um, she says, well, so far I've never heard my dog meow, and if it did, it would really make, wake me up fast, I imagine. Oh, we don't, we don't want a meowing dog, do we? Eh? Although I think I saw, I'm sure I saw a barking cat once. You want to see a barking cat once? We did say that. You also mentioned chili con carne. I believe I made a load of vegetarian chili con carne um, last Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah, I made it on Sunday. And, uh, oh, God, you know, it, it was lovely, but I made a big thing. And I suddenly realised I had more room in the freezer. So I've had to have it every day. So I had vegetarian chili con carne, Sunday lunch, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. But let me tell you, by day five, I was fed up with having it. <laughs> I liked it. But, oh, no, not this again. Do you know what I mean? So, yes, it was very nice. You also me mentioned chili con carne. I believed... And carne is a Spanish word for meat. I may have to watch it again to see if I misheard it. I don't know if you knew that. Carnal, carne, all meat, I imagine you do. No, I didn't know that. But that's what it's called, chili con carne. Or vegetarian chili con carne at Marge. Vegetarian should give you an indication there that there was no meat in it, my darling. I downloaded a movie, Nanny McPhee, that is short, sort of British, and a lady mentioned treacle had got placed in some drawers. I learnt a new word because I'd never heard the word treacle before, so I googled it and found it was a molasses type stuff. Yes, treacle, uh, uh, yes, we, we quite like treacle. A golden syrup is a treacle. Have you have a golden syrup? Oh, oh, it's delicious. You mustn't have too much of that. It sticks to your teeth, dear. Teeth fall out while you're eating it. It's terrible but very delicious. I had it with Facebook scene, getting a bit disturbed at all the negativity on there, so I'm no longer using it. I enjoyed many of the photos I saw, but again, there is not so good photos one must go through as well. Well, of course, yes. I mean, Facebook is everything, isn't it? 
you know, you will, you will find, you shouldn't find any nakedness on there. Or at least I should hope you're not. But um, there, there, there is a, a stuff on there, you know, some good stuff, some bad stuff. And again, um, I think sometimes I put on there uh, videos of animals uh, being abused in farms and that sort of thing. I do put on that. I don't put those things on there to shock people. Certainly not. I put that to inform people of something that I found out. I want you to see this. This goes on. If you wish to, if certain people wish to close their mind to it, it's entirely up to them. And there are plenty of people that might send me a message. Why did you put that on there? You know, it's upset me. Well, why do you want to walk around with your eyes closed and not know what's going on? You know, so I do put those on there. Um, I'm sure that's not what upset you. And, and the choice is, you know, watch it or don't watch it. You made your choice by uh, coming off the Facebook altogether so you don't see anything at all. Um, but there is stuff on there, you know, all sorts of good and bad stuff. You're quite right. I never had a cat like Katie that does not like being picked up, except once when she had a urinary tract infection and her stomach hurt. Has she always growled at you when you pick her up like she did in the video? No, not always. No, no. This is, uh, this is quite a recent thing, actually, Marge, since she came out of the hospital, my darling. But it could just be her temperament. As I said, all the hundreds of cats I have owned never had one do that. It could have really traumatised her from the surgery and recovering, and that could just be it. She wants comfort, but then afraid you may just take her back to the vet again. Or she's mad because you poke pills down. <laughs> that could be it. And the pills have stopped now, I'm glad to say. Poor little kitty cat no longer has to have those great big pills shoved down her throat. Poor thing she is. I'm happy she's still with you, at least, temperament and all. When the time comes for Katie to move on, will you ever have a cat again or any other pet? I have thought about this, um, Marge. And the thing is that, this, that Katie is my third cat. I've never actually bought a cat. Uh, the first was a gift from my uh, son, many, many years ago, when he was just a little boy, so my ex-wife bought it, when, when, when there was conversation. There's been no conversation at all now for whew, years and years and years. Um, and I, I, I now accept that, you know, that's how it is. So uh, yeah, you just accept it, really. I think, I think in the end, you think, oh, you know, there's nothing you can do. You know, do you know what I mean? Um, so that was, and she lasted 18 years, okay, and then died, and it was, she didn't, she wasn't, she, it was a horrible way to go, really, when she, when she died, she'd become very ill. Um, the second cat I had was, I don't know who the second cat, did, it belonged to someone, um, maybe my sister, and I, I, I can't remember where, where she came from now, and uh, she was a lovely cat, and unfortunately, uh, I found her one day, just around the back, a few years ago now, with her head missing. And uh, it turns out someone said that a dog had got her and, and, that, and that, that was a bit upsetting. So this is my third cat and this was my mother's cat. And when mother died, I took her on board and we didn't get on at first. She was uh, very upset, I think, that uh, uh, mother wasn't around anymore. So I took her on and uh, she's now been with me for coming on 13 years. And... Now, she's getting quite old now, you know, and she's had one bout of uh, bad illness, you know, a bit close. But when she goes, would I get another one? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because it's very upsetting when a, when a, when a pet goes. Because they do become part of your family. You know, I don't think I will get another pet. No, I, I don't think so. Love this one. Would never get rid of her. But after she goes, I don't think I would get another one. No. Uh, Marge says, we had 70 degrees Fahrenheit here on Friday, but now it's back to 30. That's how Oklahoma is. Rain, rain, snow, cold, heat, all the same sometimes. That's quick, and it's 70 to 30. Christ, that's a, that's a big 30, 40, 50, 60. That's a 40 degree difference. That's a bit of a tumble, isn't it, Marge? Blimey. Enough of my boring life till next time, Marge. Your life is not boring, Marge. We want to hear about it, dear. That's what this show is about, sharing stories. As indeed Robert in Iceland, who writes, Sir Robert of the Dining Table, from the land of wit and tragic here, it is not possible in these enlightened times to find out where all this lost money has gone. He's talking about the money that the UK has lost, dear. Where's it all gone? 
I mean, we had it all, we had it before, all hell broke loose. So where has it gone then? You see, I am off on a mind that it never existed in the first place and that for many years, decades perhaps, we were living in a sort of deluded state. I think you're talking about credit, aren't you? I think there's a difference between credit and money, isn't there, really? So you're quite right. Credit, when you're giving credit, it is money that doesn't exist, does it? doesn't exist. Weird. He says, well, it bloody works for me. So my proposal is this. We should return, we should, without haste, return to our pre-economics crash time and have a right good old spend, spend, and yes, spend and stuff tomorrow. Because as we all know, tomorrow never comes. Now, listen, he does talk in, I haven't got a bloody clue what he's saying half the time, don't worry. It's not you. It's not you. I don't get it either. Now listen, chaps, we gave the bankers them all this dosh, and now we is wanting it back, gov. We need to speak their language, which is a combination of gibberish and bewilderment. Now I've found the bottle opener. Who's up for it? You see, he's hitting, he's hitting the bottle again. He's, 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 I shouldn't really tell you this. It's, I, I think he's one of those alcoholics. Well, a bit in Iceland. He's always on the bottle, you know. Oh, yes, yes, yes. On the subject of flying, Robert says, I have had some experience here. I used to be a pilot, but have not been current for many years. I would have no problems at all getting into a plane without a flight deck crew. If you use the number of problems with planes, then the vast majority come down to pilot error. Most of the flight, well, except for Boeing. What about those Boeing planes, the Dreamliners? They've all been grounded, dear. <laughs> it's all going wrong for Boeing. What's happened there? They keep getting faults on them. Entire fleets of Boeing 787 Dreamliners have been grounded. Shocking. What do you think about all that, Robert? That Boeing business? Do let us know. Uh, most of the flying these days is close to fully automatic anyway. Indeed, it has been this way for a long time. This is the reason why flying is so safe, and soon we will have self-drive cars. For the, and the sooner we have self-drive cars, the better. People are good when the situation calls out for the of-the-box thinking. I would just prefer not to be in an out-of-the-box situation in the first place. Thank you very much. I just taxi to... Ta I... <laughs> I adjust to taxi the plane to the end of the runway, power up the engines and roll down the runway. At V2, the point at which I have enough airspace to take off, I pull back on the yoke and climb 12 degrees, gain altitude and turn the computer so on to do the rest. So it's all run by computers, nothing to do. These pilots, they're up there, thousands of pounds, they're not doing, there's nothing to do. They sit there with the feet up, do they? <laughs> Basically, you have a C CDU, a computer system, that you key in what you want the plane to do, and it does it. The landings can be fully automated if required. The skill comes from planning the flight and entering the details. You are required to practice on a regular basis what to do if things go wrong. But, the, but and this is the important bit, there are several computers on a plane, each backing the other one up. When landing, you engage all autopilots with each system acting to check the other. It is that safe, but if you need assurance, well, it would not be that difficult to fly it from the ground. I have mentioned this before. What you need is a dog and a bag of dog treats. The dog stops the pilot touching the controls and messing things up, and the dog treats give the pilot something to do. To end, the real work on any flight is done by the flight attendants. It is to them that you will get off your plane in problems. They feed you, help you, and have to put up with so much crap from passengers. The level of professionalism is something I have to admire, and I always have. And that's uh, from Robert in Iceland. I totally agree with those, um, those uh, 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 flight attendants. They work bloody hard, don't they? Oh, they don't. And I've, I've heard people giving them crap before. It's not very pleasant, you know. And they're not on good money. Flight attendants are not on good money at all. Don't think that they're on thousands and thousands. They, they're, they're on sort of fairly limited money. But they do get to see the world. So, you know, six of one and a half dozen of the other. By the way, my knee is, is recovered. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with my knee there. In fact, after I finish this show today, I'm going to cancel the uh, hospital appointment, the... Um, 
they would they what do they call that an adult review i'm going to cancel that appointment uh, and give that to someone else because i don't require that anymore um Hello to James. Hello, James. All right, who says, hi, Chris. Hope Katie's getting better now. Uh, yes, she's good. She's, I think she's completely recovered, to be honest. I think cats know by your breathing if you're awake, because I said, you know, um, my cat always seems to start meowing when I've woken up. You know, before I've moved or touched or said hello to her, I, I'm just in the bed and I open my eyes and sort of, you know, and, and she meows. And she starts walking up. How does she know that? How does she know if you're awake? She, he reckons it's by the breathing. On the subject of Jessops, which closed recently, uh, you were on about what, from what I've been hearing that they look like other failed shops like Woolworths, that they don't move with the times and their competitors offer something better like John Lewis. Shops like Our Price, I think, lost out as the DVD and music industry has moved online. As for Comet, they used to be owned by the Dixons group. I didn't know that. Did they really? Comet owned by Dixons? Are you sure? I didn't know that. And I have a uh, hatred for them as well as I received a rude service and would not help with a faulty computer. Yes, um, and now, of course, we've got, um, oh, oh gosh, uh, HMV. HMV have gone now. HMV and Block... Blockbusters and HMV have been around since 1920. 1920, and they've gone, they've gone bust now. And it's a great shame. I like going into HMV and record shops and having a little browse round and, and that sort of thing. But the fact is, you know, most people are downloading stuff now. You don't need to own a CD or a record. You know, and, 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 and this is where the problem was. I find, I, I, I also find HMV quite expensive for DVDs. I, think, I was looking at some DVDs and they were £12 each. And I thought it was quite expensive for a DVD now. You know, £12. Um, it, it is a shame and I am very sad to see HMV go bust. But it's happened. I knew it was going to happen. I, I told you about this shows ago. I said, who do you think is going to go down this year? And I said to you it would be HMV, didn't I? Blockbusters, same sort of thing. People are downloading movies. I have, do you know, I have yet to actually download a movie. <clears throat> Legally or otherwise. I know people, and as you, you all know them, who join these things called... Um, I think they're called torrents, and they download all the latest movies that, that are on at the cinema already. They haven't even been released on DVD, and somehow they seem to get them on these things called torrents. And they get them in their computers and that. I gather it's not very safe, though. It's, you can get viruses and that sort of thing. As I said, I've never ever downloaded a whole movie or, or even a part of a movie. The only movies I've ever watched... Well, I've never watched a movie on... I can't understand how you'd want to watch the movie on a computer. Yeah, you've, got, you've got to sit down in front of the telly and do that, haven't you? Come on. How can you sit there in front of your computer and watch an entire movie? Not a pleasant experience. I like to go downstairs and, you know, watch, watch something on the telly or, 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 or the like. But um, very, very, uh, 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 I, I, I gather it's dodgy to, to download times. Apart from being illegal, uh, can't you get viruses and things like that? I'm sure you can. I've heard this before. But, so, you, you just don't need HMV anymore. Don't need Blockbuster. Blockbuster Video, they've gone. They've gone into liquidation. Which leaves... Now, what are we going to have left in the, in the shopping centres? This is the thing. You know. You think, no Comet, no Jessops, no HMV. These are all shops, you know, it, it, so shops, shopping centres are going to start having gaps in them soon if this carries on much, much, much longer, aren't they? And who's next? I actually put a little message on my uh, Facebook this week asking people, and uh, incidentally, if you do want to join us on Facebook, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, all right? Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook username. I'm also on Twitter now. Same username, Chris Reardon UK, if you want to follow us on there, Chris Reardon UK. And I did put <coughs> a message on there. So, who do you think is due to go next bust? Three chains so far this year, and so far we're only into week three of the new year. 
and people have put it Argos. Well, I don't know about Argos. Again, with Argos, you can do it all online. I mean, I do, I've got to say, I order a lot of stuff on um, Amazon. This week I bought a, a light for my bike, a little light for the front of my bike. I bought a book and I bought a CD. You know, you click it and it just comes. It just comes through the letterbox. Wonderful. You haven't got to talk to anyone or, or, or go in a shop or leave the house. You just click this thing and it arrives. It's fantastic. Other shops that we think are going to go, uh, Nick says Robert Dias, Russell says Argos. Um, let's have a look. Uh, someone says here PC World or Curry's. I can't see that. Chris says that. Chris Willis. Hello, Chris. I can't see that somehow, Chris, because um, it's, it's the only one left. What other electrical chain shops are now left? That's it now, isn't it? Curry's and... They must be rubbing their hands together. There's nowhere else to go now. You get the occasional uh, Tesco's home and where, you know, or the electric departments of Sainsbury's or any, anything like that. But generally in those places... Um, oh, no, actually, the Tesco's one, they have people walking around assisting, like assistants, you shop assistants. But, you know, in Sainsbury's, they have little shelves with radios and things on it. It's not really anyone, you know trained to help you on these things, or at least I don't think there is. PC World and Curry's, I can't see them going somehow because they, they've managed to, that they've probably been waiting for this, knowing that some of the others are going. Uh, James says WH Smith. Now that's an interesting one. WH Smith. I don't know what's happened there. Certainly in the Bracknell branch, you go in there and it's a bloody mess. It really is. There's just stuff everywhere. Books over there, papers over there. I, so for some reason, I don't remember Smith's always being like that. Bits of computer, there's DVDs, there's CDs. It's all... Uh, Smith's in Bracknell certainly is all over the place. Can't work it out. Uh, again, Ben says, please let it be Curry's or PC World. It's not going to be those. I'll tell you that now because they've managed to, to hang on. I'm sure it's not going to be those. Any others there? Uh, Ian. Ian says, I reckon Argos are, are, is a good bet. Uh, uh, Argos and, uh, like, same as Woolworths and Comet, shabby stores, disinterested staff, middle-of-the-road products that have been bought better and cheaper elsewhere. I always wonder how the directors don't see it coming. So there you go, disinterested stuff. How many times have we all gone into a shop and the stuff is just so disinterested, it's unbelievable. I told you I was in John Lewis and I go on and on about John Lewis all the time. I was in there with my mate last week and people come up and talk, can I help you? And they genuinely, genuinely seem interested in helping you and the fact that you're there. They seem interested in helping you, whereas in, the, in, in, in these other shops that you've been to, Argos, Comet, they go, yes, mate, like that. They're just not bothered. They're not bothered. That's how it comes across. I'm a customer. I'm telling you, as a company, that's how you come across. You might say to me, they are interested. I'm sorry, I don't see it. They don't look very interested to me. Sort it out. And I don't think you can train this into people. At the beginning of the show, I said to you about the people who talked to Sainsbury's. I uh, talked to you in Sainsbury's, the staff there. I don't think it's something you can train someone to do or to talk to. Once they get past a certain age, you're picking the wrong people for the jobs. You are absolutely picking the wrong people for the jobs. You've got to take on people who are articulate in what they say. They can hold a conversation without having to be taught how to hold a conversation. That's where... I think they're going wrong. You understand what I mean? If I was to work in a shop, if I was to go and work in a shop, I have worked in a shop before. I could talk to people. You wouldn't have to t teach me how to talk to people. I think this is where they're going wrong. They're taking on people who don't know who to talk to people, how to talk to people, and then trying to train them to do it. I don't think you can do it. I think you go past a certain stage in your life and then that's it. You can either do it or you can't. You've heard some people talking in the street. Yeah, all right, mate. And, and, and like that text talk, lol, on all this business. Once you've grown up talking and being like that, how can you change? I don't think you can. So I think you're taking on the wrong staff. That's what's going on. Who's doing the interviews? The person doing the interviews. 
is obviously the wrong person to be doing that. You know, I'd, I'd love to sit in a room full of kids and every, everyone needs a chance at something, but I'm sorry, you know, some people, you know, they've decided to go through school and not learn anything or, or have sat for hours at computer games and things like that. They just don't, uh, they don't get it. They don't get it. I would, I would have them all in the office one at a time, talk to them and see if they can hold a conversation. Right, yeah, I take you on. Now, you'll be able to teach them to stack shelves or work a till or uh, cut up bits of meat in a butcher or, you know, things like that can be taught. But the actual basics of being able to talk to people, I, I do believe there's a certain age and once you go over it, you, you can't do it. What do you think on that? Let us know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Back to the email. Uh, as for the bloke who wants to do his Rand podcast, uh, yes, it was that. Oh, that was Chris Willis, wasn't it? Yes. Um, www.justintv is a free site to stream and record if he's interested in using the service. I think it's free to use too. I hope this helps. So you might want to have a little look at that, uh, Chris Willis. Uh, Justin.tv. J U S T I N dot TV. Okay. Now, how are we doing on the old time here? Let me have an... Oh, my God, we've done 40, 45 minutes, dear. I better go. All right. Um, yes, I've got some emails here. There's another one from James. One from Jimmy. One from Yukiko in Yukiko, I think it is, in Japan. A new listener and viewer in Japan. One from Angela. I'm going to have to hold these over onto the next show, okay, uh, my darlings? Because we're a little bit... Oh, one from uh, uh, Millie here and another one from Marge. I'm falling a little bit behind with the emails at the moment, so I'll do those uh, if it's all right on uh, Wednesday's show, all right? Uh, finally on the show today and when I have a, a bit of news like this um, I always, sorry that's, it's gone a little bit blurry again, I don't know what's going on with that video today, it's very strange it's going all blurry uh, finally on the show today boys and girls um, I have a, a bit of sad news when I, when I have news like this I, I always like to give it to you at the end of the show it always seems uh, appropriate to, to put it here and um those of you who've been with us for a few years now will know the name of the Kath Cornish. Well, I used to call her Cornish anyway. I think it's actually Cornish. K O M uh, K O R M. Okay. Uh, Kath Cornish. Now, this is a lady who's uh, written to us over the years many, many times. I've read out her emails. And uh, indeed, you may remember uh, about two years ago, maybe three, two or three years ago now, uh, we did have a post office box. Do you remember that? And it was a PO box, da da da, and you could send stuff in. And Kath, uh, when, I, when I mentioned that the post box was closing down, I remember Kath sending in immediately three cards. One for my upcoming birthday in a few months' time. One for Christmas, not to be opened before Christmas 2011, was it? I think it was 2011, I think it was. And another one, um, which said, not to be opened before your birthday in February 2012. So she sent all these at the same time. And uh, at the time, I put them on the desk in front of me. And uh, as the dates came up, I, I so there's like a year and a half, two years worth of, of cards there. And she also sent us in some pictures, uh, again over the years, of Wales, of where she lived. She lived in a place called Mould, in uh, Mould, as M-O-L-D, in Monmouthshire, I think it is, in somewhere in North Wales. And beautiful pictures of where she lived and the fields, and, and it, it, it did look very nice. Um, the last time I heard from her was just before Christmas, I think it was. I received this email... Um, on the 16th, so that's Wednesday this week. To Chris. My beloved mother, Kathleen Cormish from Mould in North Wales, has sadly passed away at one o'clock on the 15th of January. She loved your programmes and listened to them whenever she could. I would like to thank you on her behalf for the Christmas card. And that's from Tony 
Cormish. So, our decaf has, has died now and uh, gone to what we hope, many of us, is a, a better place. And it's made me quite sad seeing that, you know, because never met the lady. But over the years, you build up a rapport with people, you know. And, uh, ah, very, very sad. I did uh, write back to Tony. I wrote to Tony. Hi, Tony. I'm very sad to hear this. Your mum has been writing to me for some time. And I knew she wasn't very well about a year and a half ago. Uh, yes, um, I can tell you now because uh, uh, she's no longer with us. She was suffering from cancer for a while and she had some treatment. And as far as I knew, she had recovered completely from it. She didn't mention to me again that she had become ill. Um, I don't know what she had died of, uh, 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 but there we are. Um, but uh, she, I think she wanted that private, so I didn't actually ever read that part of the emails out to you. Um, and I wrote, after her troubles, I understood she was okay. Over the last few years, your mum sent me many photographs and uh, just telling you um, of the bits and pieces. Um, I did also ask uh, Tony, her son, if he has a photograph of Kath, because one thing she never sent me a photograph of was, was herself. And uh, I'd quite like to show you that with Tony's permission, but he hasn't got back to me yet. I expect he's very busy arranging things and anything like that. But if he does come back to us and sends in a photograph, I will uh, show you as well. So rest in peace, Kath. And thank you very much for being a loyal listener and uh, viewer. All right. That's it from the show today. Don't forget to, you can join me on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I've got Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, and Twitter as well. Twitter is Chris Reardon UK. I'll see you on the next show on Wednesday. Uh, have a lovely weekend. If you're in the UK, wrap up warm. Lots more snow to come. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.